Yeah, exactly. So he had a, a knee problem, bro. So he uh he, he thugged it out and he tried to play, but he wasn't the same. So I I honestly believe if, if Double A wasn't hurt, bro, I think we would have gone on here and won that game because we were winning that half. Listen, I seen I seen I seen the Duke game. I saw I seen what the team looked like, complete with Shannon, you, and 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 uh, eight double A. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah, like I seen, and then I remember, you know, if you guys don't know, JJ Reddick, he got it, he got it. Like you know how Kobe did did Steve Nash, he got it like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, 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 he gave yeah, it yeah. to him. He gave it to him. <laughs> yeah, man, people. <laughs> People talk about that to this day. I actually just released a um a merch line with the actual dunk. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. We're gonna get into that into your merch, so on and so forth. Um yeah. but yo, you know what? There's a game that you played against Gonzaga in Maui. Oh my god. If you have a chance to check out this game, the way you were cooking, you were Kevin Durant cooking, not even like college Durant. I'm talking about NBA Durant. The way you were cooking. You were cooking, fam, and the only way, the only reason yeah. why you didn't score more points because they, they, you got fouled out. Man at thirty six points. Go on YouTube, watch this game. The man, you were cooking everything you could do offensively. You were doing it, in and out, shots coming out. The oh my god, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was in the zone that game, bro, and I had a tip on my shoulder as well. You know, so there was a lot of NBA scouts in the building. Um, you know, we was going against Adam Morrison. You know, I just wanted to prove that I was one of the best two guards in the country. Um, you know, unfortunately, but fortunately, you know what I'm saying, uh, the referees was was on some BS, bro. Like, I, I'll go back and look at some of those files. I'm just like, wow. It's yeah. incredible that they called some of that stuff they called. But, um, yeah, man, I was in the zone, bro. It, it was no it, it was no stopping, man. We was in like, Maui. You know, the weather was nice. I actually sprained my ankle the night the, the day the game before, so I was actually on a bum ankle that game. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. Um, only the refs, only the, the refs, only the refs could stop you that day. I'm telling you, bro. not even your ankle could yeah. stop you. Nothing could stop you. If there was an earthquake on on the court, that ain't stopping you. I'm telling you guys, no. go watch that game on YouTube. It's only like there's snippets of it. The man was yeah. cooking, cooking. Like that's probably one of the best. Yeah, that's one of the best college games ever, bro. Bro. Oh, no. Hibachi, like what, what yo, like 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 Gilbert would say Hibachi, like you are hot there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That was crazy. So now, when did you realize you could play in the NBA where you're like, okay, you know what? I could get drafted in the first round, not the second round. Like when did it become a thing? Um the moment when I met Antoine, bro, I was like, Oh, I can go there to that playing that. I mean, I knew I was going to the NBA when I was a kid, bro. Oh word. No lie, yeah, yeah. I always knew. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to the NBA. And you know what? <laughs> that, yeah. Listen, as much as we could, you know what I mean, say salute to, to, to the women that raised, raised you, but having that male role model tell you that you could do this and that it, like, breathe that life into you, it speaks volumes to why it's important to always have some type of male role model around because who could speak that male role model, speak that male language, you feel what I'm saying? And you might, you might, you might have heard it from your mom. Say, yeah, son, you can go to the NBA, but it's different. It yeah. sounds different coming from somebody who plays the game. Yeah, like definitely, he he knew he knew the game. You know, my mom wasn't really. You know, my mom was like, whatever you want to do. My mom was wanted me to be on the artsy side of things, man. She wanted me <laughs> to draw and and you know and stay tapped in on that side. But yeah, I knew I was going to the league, man. You know what I'm saying? It was just a matter of when. <laughs> so, um. Eventually, you know what you were, apparently you were supposed to get drafted by uh by New York because you spoke to Zeke. Zeke, you, we already know Zeke is a is a legend from Detroit. You know what I mean? Isaiah Thomas. Yeah. He's also more. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's also sure. more Definitely. unapologetic, unapologetically. Um. Yeah. So so he 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 told you that you're gonna get drafted at 20th overall, but then for whatever reason you you went to Dallas at 28. You know. And and yeah, yeah. Oh, and when I hear your story, it's like, yeah, that's another thing. You only played played like five years in the league. But when I think about the story, if you would have gone to New York Knicks, it would have played different because you getting drafted by Dallas, which was coming off a finals appearance, and you're a rookie. It's hard for you to get any type of burn or, or, or development time to play with Dallas. 
as opposed to if you would have went to New York, who weren't the team wasn't that. Let's be frank, the team wasn't that good. You could have gotten more burnt, and maybe your career would have gone a little further. You know what I mean? So, but I guess getting draft, drafted by Dallas was a, was a gift and a curse because it's like you get spotlight, you get the spotlight of the team, but you're not getting the burn that you need to develop. Yeah, no, no doubt, man, no doubt. Yeah, that that's that was definitely um a great experience. Man, just going to Dallas. You know, Dallas to this day is still my second home. My mom still lived down there. But uh, yeah, that def, De Zeke definitely said that. He was like, Yeah, man, if you know if you're still around by 20, you won't make it to 21. I was like, Cool, you know what I'm saying? So I already knew in my mind. But at that point in time, you know, I didn't know that. You know, I'm still learning the business, you know, I'm still understanding how cutthroat things can be up there. So um, you know, when I didn't get drafted at 20, I was like, Oh snap, you know, it was it was stung me a little bit. But um going down to Dallas was a beautiful thing, man. I I, I love who the who I've met down there. I, I love the the environment, the people, like um the organization was great, you know. Um I learned a lot, you know. And um, like you said, uh, if I went to a trash team, of course I would have got more burned. I would have been able to display more and and uh, who knows what would have happened. But you know, I'm a firm believer in that everything happens for a reason. And um yeah. and I'm happy that I, you know, the things turned out the way they turned out. And I wouldn't change it, you know. It's, it's just what it is, bro. It's kind of like manifest destiny, you know. So we just gotta gotta make sure that we uh take advantage of every scenario that we get and be on, be on code for our, our higher calling and a higher purpose. And, and I feel like that was, it, meant, it was meant for me to go there, you know, and um, being drafted at 28, which is, or well, they say 28 is a perfect number. Right. And um, I think that's the only, yeah, that's, yeah. One of the only perfect numbers. I think it's two of them. So uh, that number is, is, has been very vital in my life ever since. And uh, I'm grateful for, you know, people like Mark Cuban, you know, and, um, uh, all of my experience, all of the beautiful relationships I've had down there, you know, women and all that cool stuff. And uh, yeah, it was great. That's straight, straight. Um, any memorable game that you remember that, that, that stood out to you that, that, that as far as that you played in, in the NBA? Um, um, now I find my first NBA started against Golden State Warriors, my fresh, my rookie year, I had like 20 points, you know, so I cooked those guys. But my, my second year, we, we, played the San Antonio Spurs on TNT. That was my first uh, national televised start. And uh, I went crazy. I did my thing. We won the game. Played, uh, I think I had like maybe like 11 points, which was a lot, you know what I'm saying, considering we had like four or five other guys I was getting busy. But, you know, uh, it was cool, dog. Yeah, I, I would say that was one of the, the coolest moments as a Dallas Maverick, you know, just just thinking off the top of my head right now on the court, you know, just getting that starting again. And, you know, Manuel Ginobili, Tony Parker. This is when it was, you know, still compete. You dig what I'm saying? So it was good to go out there and um and, and get busy against those guys and you know and had that one of the books. You know, I still got some of the pictures. I got a lot of those pictures. So it's like, yeah, those are good memories. Yeah, 